trips on a jet plane Bar railings for the watch in the neck chain Don't want drinks when I land I'm a sip of chai tea cause a fly give me neck pain Mumbai girl for the way she's smiling I had a notch on her bed frame Ooh. Italian straight in the seats of a brand new motor Quick little squirter Hey go wood boo for Mozambique Got a tailor suit with the brogues on feet I'm in Casablanca blowing jack I ran with the AC blowing in the driver's seat Talk to the platinum ends with time peace boy cause the face ain't listening Shining glistening look at these diamonds Dance while I stepped inside of the building What are your pronouns? Pronouns? Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't get it. What are my pronouns? Mm. All right, cut real quick. I'm that man. Risk taker. Hustler. Pizza? Uh, seafood. Hamburgers, I guess. You must start the perineum. So night time one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now hold the testicle and you put one hand on the navel and we're going to spiral. When your hand hold its way and the hand has chi, so it change the sperm. The sexual energy come up and when you massage this 36 times, it change the jing back into chi. So now you bring the sexual energy up and you use the tan tian to transform this sexual energy back into chi. So we call your hand have chi can help the tan tian to transforming jing sexual energy back into chi. And this is very good practice every day. You feel more energy every, after you do it because jing is the only one way it go out. Good time go fast Like an hour in my door I feel it I feel it One of my clients, uh, one of my patients is a producer in Hollywood Er kriegte vor zwei Jahren einen Austrag, Auftrag von Disney Two years ago, he received a um, task from Disney um alle alten Disney movies zu überarbeiten to um, go over and edit all the old Disney movies um in den Himmel diese Streifen einzubauen to put into the scenes of the sky these stripes so when people see a Disney movie also today, wenn die Leute einen Disney Film schauen heute heutzutage und sagen well, Klingert, uh, you say uh, du sagst Klingert, dass diese Streifenbildung erst in den letzten Jahren so schlimm geworden ist. And then you, for example, people say today, well, Klinger, you're talking about uh, these uh, stripes being formed on the sky today, only as of late. Dann sagen sie, hier ist, hier ist ein Film von 1954, guckt ihr den Himmel an. Then they will say, look at, die gleichen Streifen drin. look at this movie here from 1954 there are the same stripes at the sky die Streifen sind ein natürliches Phänomen that uh, then convince people that the stripes are a natural phenomena mein, uh, mein uh, Patient hatte für 60 Millionen Dollar bekommen my patient received for this job 60 million dollars but in the trailer the seven messages are or the six messages are that one, black people are ugly. Two, black people are rude, criminal, mm. and violent from infancy. Three, black people are stupid. Four, black people are rude and hypersexual. Uh, five, black people struggle. It's a joke. You can see that one of the numbers, <laughs> my, my, my heading got, took one of the numbers. That's why my numbers seem to be one behind. Uh, black people struggle is a joke. You know, our, our struggle for freedom is a joke. And this is a, this is a recurring theme with this guy McFarlane. And lastly, the black people are worthless. All mm. of those are the messages. And you could look at almost any screenshot from that, uh, f from that trailer and it will fit into one of these categories. The biggest mistake I ever made as a parent, in my opinion, was letting my children go to public school. The second biggest mistake was letting them go to a school at all. The purpose of school is to manufacture 
employees for businesses. It's not to teach your children to be smart. There's a book that I would recommend highly. It's called Weapons of Mass Instruction. John Taylor Gatto, he was the five-time teacher of the year in New York, and he became totally disillusioned when he realized that the purpose of being a school teacher was not to teach math. I think that maybe he taught English, English or math. He said, I became disillusioned the day I realized my job was not to teach math, but my job was to teach school. Think about it. In school, they teach you that nothing is important. How do they do that? It's the only place that you will ever work in your life where you work on something for 45 or 55 minutes and then a bell rings and you to- close your book. You don't care about that anymore until tomorrow. It doesn't make any sense. And they're pro- they, the, reason, the reason they use bells in schools is because that's what they use on the assembly lines. Lunchtime, ring a bell. Okay, go to lunch. Ring a bell again. You come back from lunch. The whole thing was programmed for a stimulus response. We still tell our children, well, if you want to do well in life, you got to go to college, get a degree. Well, the only reason we tell them that is because that's what we're expected to tell them. We haven't really thought about it. 1829 cotton producers started crushing, crushing cotton seeds for oil. They sold it as NG lubricant, and some guy said, hey, maybe we could eat the oil. Yeah, let's eat it. 1911 Crisco massively market their cotton seed oil. Everyone ate Crisco, oh yeah. Now in 2024, we all eat a five ton of oil. But if you can't afford them, then how are you managing your weight? Don't you know, Sheila? Now there's a whole new obesity drug for those of us who can't afford Ozempic and Manjaro. I've controlled all my cravings to be thinner with Lizzo. Oh, oh, it's Lizzo. FDA-approved Lizzo makes you feel good about your weight, and it costs 90% less than Ozempic. I've lowered my standards and my expectations. It's Lizzo. In case studies, 70% of patients on Lizzo no longer care how much they weigh. I don't give two shits. Lizzo helps you eat everything you want and keep physical activity to a minimum. Some patients report constipation while listening to Lizzo. Are you sick, ma'am? <laughs> are, you, are you wearing that for safety or just to let everybody know who you're voting for? <laughs> I think she's laughing, I can't tell. (laughs) Thank you for coming despite your, (laughs) everything about you. Another one of my favorite diseases is Alzheimer's disease. It's a physician-caused disease. It's a pretty powerful statement. It's a physician-caused disease. We didn't have Alzheimer's disease 40 years ago. It was not in any medical dictionary, medical textbooks. It was not taught in any medical class. It only became a disease entity in 1979. Today, according to Ralph Nader, it rivals cancer and costs $300,000 per patient, and it's the number four killer of adults over the age of 65 behind cardiovascular disease, cancer, diabetes, then comes Alzheimer's disease. Now, we eliminated Alzheimer's disease from animals from 40 years ago. Can you imagine a dairy farmer with 400 head of cows out in the pasture with Alzheimer's disease? And he's yelling at them, you know, woo! And rattling the feed bucket trying to get them up to get milk. And the cows are all out there scratching their heads saying, why do we want to go to the barn to get milk? And if we did, where's the barn? Because he kind of, you know. So the farmer has to put fuel in the ATV and ride out there and herd them up. And the fuel cost goes up, labor cost goes up, so they have to raise the price of milk. Nobody's happy. So we eliminated Alzheimer's disease by eliminating vegetable oil, corn oil, and soil from the animal's diet and putting in large doses of vitamin E and selenium. There are only a handful out of the 100,000 doctors, Canadian doctors, that didn't take the vaccine uh, that are still practicing medicine. So it's it's something like 99.9% vaccination rate. And they were the first ones to line up for their vaccines. Well, as I started looking at the sudden deaths of Canadian doctors, I realized, yes, most of them are dying from cardiac issues, heart injuries, cardiac arrests, uh, you know, dying while jogging or swimming, dying yeah. in their sleep. And Dr. Peter McCullough has talked about this extensively about the myocarditis and the damage to the heart, the scarring to the heart. And then some were di- dying from blood clots, pulmonary emboli, strokes. But then there was a quite a large subset of doctors who were developing extremely aggressive cancers and uh, cancers at an age that they shouldn't be getting. So, for example, there was a doctor who developed gastric cancer in his 30s. Presented at stage four, he was dead in less than a year. 
very rare brain cancers in young individuals in their 20s and 30s, medical students, medical residents. And these cancers would always present at stage four, and they would always kill them in a matter of a few months, and it was always less than a year. And, you know, at first I didn't know, you know, what the term for this was or what the phenomenon was. I just started, you know, really paying attention to it, tracking it. I then, you know, realized that this is being called turbo cancer by people on social media. A turbo cancer is not a medical term, but it's a term that people came up with to really describe the extremely aggressive nature of these cancers in the COVID vaccinated. And these cancers behave completely differently, unlike anything I've seen before in my career. And I've diagnosed uh, over 20,000 cancer patients in my career with cutting edge PET CT, positron emission tomography imaging, CT, MRI, pathological correlation. I've never seen anything like this. I've never seen stage four breast cancers presenting in women in their 20s. I've never seen stage four colon cancers presenting in men and women in their you know 20s, 30s. Uh, leukemias that will kill you in a matter of days or even hours after diagnosis. Um, lymphomas that again, kill you in a matter of months. Hey, wanna learn the biggest secret in the world? In March, 2023, sketchy billionaire Peter Thiel started a bank run I did 1,500 hours of research, and I learned all their rotten secrets. The big one is the cryptocurrency is history's first planetary multi-trillion dollar Ponzi scheme. That's an economic doomsday device. And when that Ponzi goes insolvent, as all Ponzi's must, we'll get the worst economic collapse in world history. And every powerful person you can think of is in on it. Want to know why everything gets worse and more expensive? That's because we live in a secret kleptocracy. That's when the government gets taken over by con artists whose only job is to steal from the public. And I hope you know this is wonderful news. Because now that the public knows about the secret kleptocracy, they get to abolish their criminal government. I think we should all create our own bank. I think we need to create our own bank. First, you set up a community trust structure, and then you appoint everybody as a managing director of a trust. You set up a trust account for everybody. Everybody pools all this together. You buy gold and silver with it. You invest it, and you pay dividends back to everybody in the community. That's how we could run an economic system and completely bypass the federal government and the international bankers. Every community could do that. Every church could do that. Every organization could do that. Every family could do that. And watch the wealth start shifting back into your hands again instead of into the hands of those who really don't care about your wealth. The New World Order has no concern for your money, really. They just want power and control. It goes like this, okay? It goes, brown are the wealthiest income earners and asset owners in America. Brown meaning what? Uh, Indian. Indian, okay. Then it's uh, Asia. Okay. I think you guys are right there, number three. The Jews? Number three spot, because okay. y'all get into a whole bunch of other bullshit. There's not that many of us, though. There's way less I, Jews I, than No, 100%. The other. I yeah. mean, by GDP and by population, you guys are fucking like outstanding, you know, outliers. Great. Then it's the white people in the middle. Okay. Now, the black and browns are bottom two groups. Black and brown. His well, black and Hispanic, yeah. Yeah. Because you already said brown but, is Indian. But the most embarrassing stat there is... You're a fucking privileged white person in America, and you're in the fucking middle. Mm. It's disgusting. You got education available to you, healthcare available to you, fucking lawyers available to you, banks available to you. You can walk in anywhere, nobody fucking for, and you still couldn't fucking. So make you're saying it to all the these top. people are wasting their whiteness. That's Fuck what you're yeah, saying, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, ain't no way another fucking race is gonna beat me to the top of the food chain, mm. and I'm white. Mm. And you're white, mm -hmm. but you made it to the top of the food chain. So that's what I'm saying. You're the outlier. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I'm like, there's no way I'm being blessed with all this. Uh, okay. And male, by the way. And male, right. Male whites. Yeah. You're totally wasting. And good looking. Right. So because of my background, my mother worked in Manhattan criminal court for 33 years. I knew that the United States was replicating features of Nazi Germany and Eastern Europe with respect to its black population. I was raised with an understanding of mass, mass racialized mass incarceration. 
I lived through it. I've been, we're still living through it. Nine percent of the world's prison population is black American. So I have been continually... Nine percent of the world's, world's prison population comes from that tiny group of 38 million people. Uh, if the nation of black America... Uh, if, the, if the nation of black America was its own country, it should be the third largest nation on earth. And that's an emergency. So we came in, we've long had this fake news directed against our black population. And it's completely unsurprising that someone came and then said, hey, you're used to fake news being directed against this population. Let's just generalize it and direct it against everyone. What did you think we were before you began to think of us as human beings? Well, in a, in a way, we thought of you almost as a very superior pet. My name is Anicia Carey. We are from Monarch Montessori, a DPS public school in Montbello. We are here to ask for help to get our school a year for a classroom. Here are some reasons why we need a new classroom. Yes. If you need space, go back to fucking Africa. Nobody wants you here. Whoa. All you better do is burn shit down and yes, ruin sir. stuff. You yeah. fucking little... They are a monster. You are muted me again, you dumb boomer. Go that. ahead, protect the niggers. So protect the niggers. Kick you. Producer, can we remove no. them? Why would you remove me when you should remove the niggers? Yeah. Or better yet, the Jews that brought them here. Disgusting. <laughs> They're gone. They're gone from the Zoom. I'm really sorry about that. I am so sorry. Can we start the timer over, please? We're going to sit behind you and support you. You guys are so amazing for being here. We're right here. Okay? Hello, my name is Mallory Renee We are a Montessori school that's also a bilingual program something or rather someone we had to take care of because we had to do so much of their thinking for them we had to do almost everything uh, for them that except living their own own lives anything outside we, we had to do for them you have some mighty strong looking workers here sir. I'd be willing to offer you $40 for two of the white ones and 50 for the black. Are you referring to our student athletes? Student athletes. Oh, that is brilliant, sir. Now, when we sell their likeness for video games, how do we get around paying for our slave student athletes then? Look, there are good reasons why our student athletes cannot be paid, young man. I ain't arguing. If they got paid, then how do we make all our money? I think the problem is that we forget that white people today have the option of tapping out, right? So you can sing Jabulani and you can dance, but then you can also remove yourself from the lived experiences of the culture that you're trying to... I'm sorry, I'm speaking. From the, from the culture that you're, that you're trying to represent. That doesn't make you a bad person. It's just the truth of the situation. And I think in South Africa, this is really what the conversation needs to be about. We need to talk about why did apartheid end? Why did colonialism end? It didn't end because people's perspectives and behavior changed. It ended because it was expensive. It ended because white people couldn't travel anymore. It ended because they couldn't go and play sport. Because entertainment for white people was over. Therefore, they needed to bring it on. That's not... We need to be honest. We must be honest about this. So for me... So, so for me, when we want to have this conversation, it's easy to say, let's talk about the Rainbow Nation. Of course, you can look forward if your life was never tainted by the, ex by the experience of apartheid. Of course, you can look forward. It's not the same. And that's the experience of being black, constant, constantly having to reconcile your existence, reconcile your hum humanity, and demand respect and demand a level of, of humanity as opposed to what other people just get automatically by being white. That's the reality. You don't have to label it as racism if you don't want to, but it is what it is. All right. It's not going to hurt, but if you want to like beat me on camera because I'm black. <gasps> no. Nope. you already seen it. No. No, you beat me because I'm black. One, two, three, one, two, three, drink. One, two, three, one, two, three, drink. One, two, three, one, two, three, drink. Join back to life. Let's go. You mentioned one time about the Native Americans being on reservation, but Native Americans not necessarily. No, they were here. They was never on any reservations. Who was on the reservations? 
were those who were mixed with the conquistadors mm -hmm. because uh, the natives were just plain native people indigenous to the earth itself. Yeah. And people didn't come from Africa. The whole planet, you could walk across it before the water starts separating it, mm. before you started using ships. Africa, the continent, is nine, uh, almost 9,000 miles away, and you have to stop through 4,000 ports to get fresh water and food. <laughs> so it would be impossible to bring millions of people to America. That would be insane because you wouldn't be able to eat or drink any water yourself. You would right. die before you got here. Bring and stack. African Americans, I'm proud. We're not African Americans. African -Americans. We all didn't come from, but we're, we're also America. indigenous here too. How is that? <laughs> okay, you just, well look, first let me do this. We're not here to discuss what happened yeah. before 1776. That's what we're trying to tell you. Uh -huh. You're having a different battle and we're saying, you're talking to the wrong people. We're talking to the United States government, not the colonies, nothing that occurred. I heard you. We're getting to the aboriginal. Your discussion should not be directed at us. You should go to the United States government as we are doing. Why are you here talking to us about being aboriginals? Hold on. We also claim aboriginals. My grandfather was a Cherokee. If you, if you really know your history, you know about the $5 Indians, and you read when the so-called explorers and Christopher Clanon, which isn't even his real name, when he came here and when they came here, they said there were very dark-skinned people running around. It's all in history books. All of the, the casinos right now in the United States government, the United States government just told the Indian um, tribes, if you keep discriminating against the black descendants of indigenous people, we're cutting your funding. Oysters were found two miles above sea level. Eleven foot oysters weighing 600 pounds, two miles above sea level in the Andes Mountains. When they climbed Mount Everest, they found petrified clams on top of Mount Everest. Interesting thing about these clams, they're petrified and they're closed. Now, I'd like to point out, Mount Everest is a little ways from the beach, first of all, okay? About 450 miles to the beach. And clams do not climb mountains very well. And when a clam dies, it opens. You can walk along the beach and find a million seashells. You hardly ever find a matched pair. And you never find them closed if they're dead. They open right away. How do you get petrified closed clams on top of Mount Everest? When the night has come And the land is dark I'm sure you're going in the ocean and you're not trying to tell us this should be like super broadcasting. Listen. Hoping to capture today, if not in their nets, then at least on camera. Are you ready? Yeah. Let's do it. A couple months earlier, a similar effort revealed a stunning sight. Thousands of pickle-shaped organisms called pyrosomes filled the ocean as far as the eye could see. When we saw how many there were, it was just like, oh my gosh, this is mind-boggling. This is definitely something that we haven't seen before, and we don't know why they're here. That's the big question now. From California to Alaska, the ocean is so loaded with pyrosomes, they're clogging the nets of researchers and fishermen. At first it was irritation because they were clogging our research nets, um, and then it was kind of like, wow, okay, what is going on here? What, why are there so many? Why now? There's pyrosomes mingling with schools of fish and becoming fish food. Biologists are finding them inside the bellies of fish and whales. But normally, they're found in tropical waters. 
Pilot from Yakutia couldn't be believed until he showed this video. Flying over the mountains of Yakutia, he saw a strange stripe, but upon closer inspection, he was shocked by an infinitely long fence. But even more mysterious is that exactly the same wall is hidden at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean. Not long ago, this wall could be seen on Google Maps, but today cartographers have erased all mentions and photos of this fence. Researchers' divers say that at the base in some places there are strong disruptions resembling explosions, and the height is uneven, becoming lower in some places. But the scariest thing discovered at the base of these walls is broken equipment of unknown civilizations. There is a law in place right now that not only restricts but incriminalizes any person who is involved indirectly or directly by giving information or healthcare services for home birth working practices. And this law is not only unconstitutional, it is inhumane. It is a clear violation of human rights and our autonomy to maintain our traditional birth practices as people, not only just Kanaka people, but all peoples living in Hawaii. But here's what you're going to trip out on. The person that wrote the language in this incriminalizing bill is a woman. And Linda Ichiyama is the head of the Women's Caucus to represent women in the House of Representatives. A bunch of Europeans on the carnivore diet and they're thriving off of it. I see it. They're losing weight. They're kicking their body into ketosis. They're gaining muscles. The actual neurological functionings and cells are firing off. They think quicker. They're getting rid of the brain fog. But you take that same specific diet and give it to a so-called Afri uh, African-American or who I'm going to call an uh, aboriginal melanated being, they get sick. They set their body sets up in putrefaction. They get worms off of it. Diabetes mellitus and hyperglycemia sets up. They blood pressure and hypertension go up off the same food showing you that we're biologically different all i'm trying to do is wake my people up and say hey we've been lied to we've been bamboozled we've been eating another people food we've been worshiping another people god we've been drinking another people liquids it's time to wake up and find our own and if we can't find our own we need to go into nature see what we closely assimilate with and we need to rebuild the culture and, th and that's it <laughs> Nice, 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 nice,